God, God is love. I don't love you. Hey Jeff, from Ringworm, singer. Well, first of all, I think it's, it's important to be relevant at any time, not just like with your newer stuff, with all of it, because I mean, that's your lineage, you know what I mean? When it's all said and done, that's what's left, you know? So you gotta, you know, take every record seriously. But with the new one, we approached it the same, same way as we did every other record, um, which is pretty simplistic. We just write a bunch of songs, they go in and record them, and then when they're done, I go in and scream on them. So it's a pretty simple process, not a lot of production. We didn't really have any specific uh, goal in mind as to like a theme or a certain direction we wanted to go. But uh, um, yeah, so we just kind of approach it like we do every record. We just, yeah. the, the guys write some heavy riffs and I go in and scream on them. So that's, in a nutshell, that's kind of how it works for us. Yeah, oh absolutely, I think the new record came out really good. Um, I mean, as far as a labor of love, I, I've just, it, every record's laborious, you know what I mean? It's not, for me, it's not like a fun thing to do, go in there and like, I'm having so much fun in the studio, you know? Which isn't the case, really, that's the, that's the hardest part about being in a band is the studio for me. I don't really enjoy it too much, it's grueling and taxing and shit like that, but uh, when it's all done, it's a huge relief. You're like, oh, I'm done with this thing, finally, fucking done. You know, and then you get to go out and play it every night, so, and that's a whole other thing too, but we're, uh, yeah, we're real happy with the way it turned out. Even when we first started, um, our goal was the same. I just like, like I was saying, we just pretty much, uh, as far as like any type of like jumping on current trends or anything like that, we've always stuck with the same thing. And, you know, you could say we're one trick pony, but it's a pretty fucking good trick, you know what I mean? So if, you know, why change it if it's not broken? You know what I mean? So um, we just continue just doing what we do, you know? That's, that's all we really know. Well, we, you know what, we ride the fence. We've always done that since we started. And like, it's, I mean, people always find a need to put a label on something. You know, if they don't know what it is, they gotta label it something so it makes it easier to consume or easier to market. But uh, for us, I mean, we've always straddled the fence. I mean, we're, we play metal. We play metal music because we all grew up on 80s thrash and skate punk and stuff like that. And so we do that, but we bring that into, a, we kind of grew up in a hardcore, in the hardcore scene, but we're playing metal. But we grew up on punk, so our delivery's kind of punk rock with it. So it's like, we could kind of play with any band, you know what I mean? And still, you know, offend people equally across the board. So uh, sometimes it has its advantages. The, the downside of that is, say, if we're labeled a hardcore band, you know, there's a whole cross section of, say, metalheads or young metal kids that would love what we do, but they just heard we're a hardcore band. So they'll be like, oh, well, you know, I've heard Madball before. You know, they don't, you know, I don't like them, so I won't listen to this band because they're a hardcore band. And I love Madball, but we don't sound like Madball. You know what I mean? We're on the different, you know, opposite end of that spectrum so it's like that's when being labeled a hardcore band or whatever that's when it has disadvantages when people just hear the label and then they won't give it a chance because of that so the metal community I, I mean I, like I said as, as far as in the band but like just in my social if I kind of I kind of straddled all those things because I listen to everything across the board you know and uh, the metal community is real tight and the, the one thing about the hardcore community it's very um, I mean, it's youth-oriented for sure. So along with that become, comes lots of drama, lots of fashion, you know what I mean? And that's just kind of how it is. So like that, I'm, that I really, I, I don't care for any of that at all, all the drama and all the bullshit. And like, I won't listen to them because this guy did this and I won't go to that show because there's not any girls there or, you know, I won't listen to them because their hair is long or, you know, all the drama and all the bullshit that goes with with that whole scene, I could, no, I don't care for it. I mean, every scene has their little drama bullshit stuff, but um, the metal community is a little more, uh, sometimes a little more down to earth in a way that it, they don't care what, they don't care what you look like. They don't care if you eat meat or you drink or you smoke crack, it doesn't matter. If it's heavy and it's good, they'll like you no matter what. They seem to be a little more accepting, you know, because it's not such of a, a fashion or a social statement, you know? I still, I, you know what, the thing I, like, 
newer technologies, um, they have the advantages, you know what I mean? I mean, you could instant access to everything. Everything's spoon-fed to you. And that's good and that's also bad, but like coming from being older, you know, you still had to write, actually write letters to someone. That's crazy, you know, actually write a letter, not email, but actually write and put it in an envelope and mail the th fucking thing. You know, you had to go to record stores to buy records, you know, and you meet people and the, the whole social interaction of the whole, uh, you know, years ago when it was way more social, that's the part that I, that I kind of miss, you know, the social interaction, you know, meeting people at shows and like having to actually like talk to people, you know what I mean? That's not all done over a computer. Like now you could like YouTube a, a show and then just tell people you were there, you know, because you can see everything on camera and you just like, you know, two years later, like, oh yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? Just be with, you know, but it has its advantages, but that's just the way things are. I mean, there's still a lot of um, younger kids that are still so you know I mean they're, they're still into it they're still social they're still like really into it and they don't use uh, they don't let the technology of today like spoon feed them whatever is good for them like you know this is what you should listen to open up wide you know what I mean so there's still a lot of intelligent like music fans music fans out there that still know what's going on you know no actually if I look back if when I look back on like our older material as far as lyrically goes sometimes it when I'm writing it, it doesn't really make sense to me then, you know? And then say two years later, I could go back and look at it and listen to a song and maybe, you know, read along with what I wrote. And I'm like, wow, this makes perfect fucking sense now. Cause like when you get like a bird's eye view of where you were at a certain point in time, you may not notice where you're at at the time, but like two years later, you're looking back at it, you're like, wow, I get exactly what I was talking about because that's where I was then. And you may not understand it when you're doing it, but sometimes it takes a little while for you to figure out where the what the fuck you were talking about, you know? And sometimes it makes perfect sense, so. That, that's the thing, like with bands that are around a long time, we've never really broke up. We just kind of like, bands will, you know, get really popular and then they'll break up for years and then they'll come back and then it's, it's more of a nostalgia act than anything else. And I've seen bands that do that and you watch them and everyone's really excited to see them and that's great and they may sound good, but I may have seen this band back when they were really doing it, and I'm like watching, going, yeah, they're just kind of phoning it in, man, you know what I mean? Co collecting a paycheck. And I guess, you know, good for them, you know, that's cool. But we're not that type of band, you know, we never, we, we, put it this way, we'll never become a nostalgia jack. When it's time to, you know, if we can't do it 100%, then we're not going to do it, you know? Physical train wreck, but I mean, I may look great, but I'm. I mean, I got a bad back, my knee, both my knees are shot. Every night I feel like I got beat up with bats. You know what I mean? But that's okay. I mean, over the years, like, I've kind of like, you know, in our earlier days, I mean, it was every night. I get fucking hammered every fucking night. And I'm still, you know, I still have my moments, that's for sure. But like, for me, it's now, it's like, you know, I'm older now, so it's important to me not to just go up there and be a fat old slob, you know what I mean? Like, people want to see your band, so you kind of owe it to them to give them 100%, you know what I mean? So I kind of, you know, I lay off a little bit here when I know I'm beating myself up too much. So, but I, you know, we all still party and shit like that, but you try to eat better as best as you can on the road. Try not to eat so many fucking hot dogs and crap at the Flying Jays and all that shit, so, you know try to eat a banana or an apple every time you, you have a chance to. It's tough, but I don't know. I, I try to, uh, I work out a little bit when I get the chance on the road just to, basically I work out enough just to stay slightly out of shape. You know what I mean? I think at my age, just slightly out of shape is an achievement. You know what I mean? So it's still in reach, but you know. I guess when it's all said and done, um, we pretty much, we stuck to what we do, you know what I mean? We don't try to, we never tried to be anything other than what we were, you know? So, and we did it, you know, I'd like to think we still got some more gas in the tank, that's for sure, because we're lifers, we'll never quit. Because if we, once this, you know, they'll probably reach a certain point where this just, you know, it's not gonna go anymore, you know what I mean? And that happens with everything. But I'm sure we'll all do music in some aspect, we're all lifers. So, but when this band uh, finally sees its last show, I'm, it, it'll be, we've, got, we've done everything on our terms. 
We've never had to like cater to any crowd or any record label or any type of trend. And we did it all with like consistency, integrity, and you know, we've done it 100%. You know, we never just kind of phoned it in. So I guess that would, could, have, could be our legacy, I guess, I don't know.